In the 12 years or so since it was mysteriously created by a shadowy coder or coders, cryptocurrency has come an extraordinarily long way. At first, no more than a fanciful experiment, an online wheeze traded between nerds and true believers, Bitcoin and its likenesses are now a headline-grabbing phenomenon poised to upend the stodgy world of mainstream finance forever. And all the big tech firms are watching closely, weighing up just what this crypto revolution means for them. But there are major questions to address. Should this supposedly free, democratized system be exploited by plutocrats like Elon Musk? Aren't revolutions ideally meant to favor the little guy? Join us today as we crunch the numbers and learn how and why the big tech companies are adopting cryptocurrencies. Facebook was arguably the first high-profile tech giant to throw its hat into the crypto ring, with its so-called Libra initiative launched in 2019. With trademark Silicon Valley earnestness and aplomb, project leader David Marcus announced his lofty aims at the time as nothing short of freedom, justice and money. Libra was in fact set up by a consortium of large firms, 28 of them to be precise. In addition to Facebook, the stakeholders, who all enjoyed an equal share in exchange for their $10 million investment, included Visa, PayPal, Coinbase, eBay, Uber, Lyft, Spotify, Vodafone and more. So, what is Libra all about? Where normal blockchain-based currencies are decentralized by design, the gimmick of Libra is that the project is also backed by a basket of financial assets, such as cash in assorted currencies and US Treasury securities. In this way, Libra hoped to diminish the risk and volatility that is inherent in other crypto operations, and so off-putting to all powerful government regulators. Libra, which has failed to get off the ground yet for reasons we'll explore shortly, had at least one noble aim helping the 2 billion or so people worldwide who have no access to conventional banking and are therefore shut off from opportunities presented by the 21st century digital economy. Expertise being brought to the project by the likes of Visa would certainly have helped with this rollout. However, Facebook and its allies have thus far struggled to convince regulators that they are a good bet for running a trustworthy parallel financial system. Libra would inevitably butt heads with traditional sovereign currencies, as those 2 billion potential users could cause headaches for central bankers around the world. The regulatory hurdles Libra, recently rebranded Diem, will need to clear are certainly formidable. Not least complex requirements to stamp out fraud, money laundering, terrorist financing and rudimentary consumer protections. Small wonder big partners like Visa and Stripe quickly developed cold feet and backed out of the program. And if Facebook hoped for support from its peers in the tech giant community, well, those friend requests have so far gone unanswered. In 2019, Apple CEO Tim Cook issued a scathing rebuke to Facebook's passion project, calling it out for the power grab he said it was. Cook told French newspaper Les Echo, I really think that a currency should stay in the hands of countries. I'm not comfortable with the idea of a private group setting up a competing currency. A private company, he went on, shouldn't be looking to gain power this way. But that was two years ago. Could his own Cupertino iPhone maker be ready to take a fresh look at the issue? Apple Pay Vice President Jennifer Bailey has tantalizingly implied her team is watching cryptocurrency and added, we think it's interesting. We think it has interesting long-term potential. A report issued earlier this year by analyst Mitch Steves at prestigious RBC Capital Markets seemed to all but goad Apple into throwing its hat into the crypto ring. Steves wrote, with an unmistakable note of sass, that a move into cryptocurrency could be a wiser investment for the firm than its long-anticipated Apple car. And besides Mitch Steves' argument goes, Apple has a vast cash pile, somewhere in the region of $200 billion. So if Apple, as Mitch Steves' report suggests, invested just 1% of that immense fortune in crypto, that would be $2 billion. Enough in itself to raise the value of crypto by a substantial margin. If that raise becomes a healthy but quite conceivable 10%, Apple would receive a return on their investment and, at a stroke, lend much-needed legitimacy to crypto. This, in turn, would help overcome those niggling regulatory jitters surrounding alternative currencies. And besides, they're already somewhat working in the payment sphere through Apple Pay and Apple Card. To be sure, Apple has proceeded very cautiously with crypto so far. In 2014, it went as far as banning cryptocurrency wallets from its App Store, although this decision was later walked back. Apple still bans crypto mining on its iPhones and so far refuses to let crypto purchases go through on its Goldman Sachs-backed Apple Card. Still, crypto fanatics dream that if Apple were to join the party, its world-class software and privacy-oriented design philosophy should make cryptocurrency mainstream overnight. Steve's report also pointed to Apple's colossal user base. 
Apple's install base is 1.5 billion, and even if we assume only 200 million users would transact, his report says, the potential revenue opportunity would be in excess of $40 billion a year. Certainly, when Tesla revealed its investment of $1.5 billion into Bitcoin, the OG cryptocurrency soared 14% to a record high of $43,500. In a report submitted by Tesla to accompany its eye-catching transaction in front of the US Securities and Exchange Commission, Tesla said it planned to further diversify and maximize returns by investing its hard-earned capital into alternative reserve assets, including digital assets. There's more. We expect to begin accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment for our products in the near future, said the same statement from Tesla. CEO Elon Musk has been tweeting about crypto a lot lately, raising the profile of ultra-obscure Marscoin and in particular his pet favorite Dogecoin. Within hours of Musk declaring Dogecoin is the people's crypto, the currency, started as a joke in 2013, surged more than 50% to an overall market value of $6.3 billion. Not bad for a five-word tweet. But it isn't just devil-may-care Silicon Valley upstarts driving the crypto boom. Traditional, fusty financial services provider MasterCard also announced this month it was joining the fun. Whatever your opinions on cryptocurrencies, MasterCard said in a statement, the fact remains that these digital assets are becoming a more important part of the payments world. We are seeing people using cards to buy crypto assets, especially during Bitcoin's recent surge in value. The upshot of this? MasterCard will start supporting select cryptocurrencies directly on our network. MasterCard's statement sounds all the usual notes of caution about regulatory uncertainty, but insists it's ready to help build on the growing legitimacy of cryptocurrencies. The firm already owns 89 blockchain patents in-house, which should go a long way to making its future endeavors in the cryptosphere go with a bang. Finally, Amazon. Recent job postings posted by the company appear to suggest Amazon is looking to, if not enter the crypto world per se, at least try its hand launching its own currency. The advertised role at Amazon's Digital and Emerging Payments division in Mexico would be part of a team developing ways to help customers convert their cash into digital currency, which could then presumably be spent on Amazon products. We are building a tech team to build innovative payment products for our customers in emerging markets, read the job post, echoing Libra's lofty intent to drive market participation among consumers in the developing world. This particular job posting might, to be clear, merely be an adjunct to Amazon Coin, a long-established part of the firm's Kindle Fire and Android App Store, effectively a discount coupon program, but it's tantalizing to speculate otherwise. Clearly, as crypto fever grows ever more intense, the big tech giants will be forced to at least work alongside them. And if anybody has the clout to bring cryptocurrencies kicking and screaming into the mainstream, it's colossal brand giants like Apple. The question isn't whether or not they could. After all, regulatory problems are all fundamentally negotiable, but whether or not they should. As Tim Cook again puts it, a private company shouldn't be looking to gain power this way. What do you think? Should the power to issue major currencies rest solely with the old-fashioned sovereign states? Or is this a sideshow and we're inevitably about to cross the precipice upon which the crypto bubble bursts? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit subscribe for more cash money tech content.